Ernie Johnson in Atlanta. The Hawks force Game 5 against the Heat, winning at Miami 103-89. to Denver is trying to force Game 5 against Seattle. The Sonics trailing at the half, now lead by 5, going to the fourth period. And it's San Antonio and Utah in Game 2 of our TNT doubleheader. Utah with a 2-1 lead. The Worm returns next. The NBA Playoffs on TNT are brought to you by Budweiser. Beachwood aged for a crisp, clean, classic taste. By Jeep and Eagle, a division of the Chrysler Corporation. And by AT&T, the official telecommunications company of the NBA. Welcome. From the Delta Center in Salt Lake City, game four between the San Antonio Spurs and the Utah Jazz. The Jazz with a two games to one lead. And here are the Chief Eagles starting lineups and the word Dennis Rodman is back. Well, Gary, that's the big event here in Salt Lake City. Dennis Rodman and girlfriend Madonna in town. The star out here tonight for the, U uh, for the Utah Jazz, of course, will be their double tandem of Stockton and Malone. But for San Antonio, the focus will be on Dennis Rodman. And you can see the Spurs off very effectively. They've hit five of their first six shots. And that is remarkable when you figure that for the series, San Antonio shooting only 38%. Uh, they have struggled just immensely. John Lucas told us that he, he didn't like some of the shots in the last couple of games, but he said, honestly, Dick and Gary, we liked a lot of the looks we had. We need to get those shots down. Sure. David Robinson, who's had a tough time with Carl Malone the entire series, has that one go off his feet. Malone did pick up a foul a moment ago early in the action as the Utah Jazz have won 23 of the last 24 games in Salt Lake City against San Antonio. Winning impressively by 33 points on Tuesday. And San Antonio without this guy, Dennis Rodman, who's playing some defense inside. And Carl Malone, who's having a big series, scores again. Dennis got caught on the high side. He stepped around and tried to front Carl Malone. Carl is so strong, moves him out, puts his hand up, and gets the lob. Miguel Knight not able to get the shot. Malone is averaging almost 28 points a game and over 12 rebounds a game in the first three games of the series. The best of five. And Utah wanting to close it out. They do not want to go back to the Alamo Dome in San Antonio. John Stockton kicks it out to Malone. Malone with a good look. Well, that man, Carl Malone, told you and I, Gary Bender, that, hey, he's going to let it all hang out. He said, what do you mean? He said, right here, right on this floor, we are not going back to San Antonio. And a reach-in foul is going to be whistled this time against Jeff Hornacek. That will be his second. During the regular season, the Jazz were able to win all five. But let's look at the series since they've gotten into the playoffs. Spurs started well. Terry Cummings started them out well. But look at games two and three. The Spurs averaging 78 points a game. He had 72 on Tuesday. Yeah, well, that's amazing when you consider that they have a man on their roster that had 71 by himself in the last regular season game of the year against the L.A. Clippers. He is down about 12 points average-wise in this series as uh, now Jay Humphreys will check into the game. And Humphreys has been having a huge series for this Utah team. He had 25 points in the game in San Antonio before coming here. He's 11 of 16 from the field. And for the entire series, he's shooting 66%. Yeah, and in game three, he was five for seven. Very, very hot. Big baskets, 11 points. The Admiral leading the, the uh, San Antonio Spurs in the early going. He has seven points, seven of the Spurs, 14. Jennifer Stockton, there's that great synergy we see between Carl Malone and John Stockton. They played together for nine years. We're going to take a break. San Antonio off much more effectively here tonight. Fourteen eleven, San Antonio with the early lead, and the Spurs welcome the return of the worm. Dennis Rodman, he had his own mode of transportation as the NBA's leading rebounder missed Tuesday's game three, serving a one-game suspension and a ten thousand dollar fine. I asked him how it felt sitting out Tuesday's game. I almost cried the other day because it, I felt like that my uh, my Warriors went out there without any um, kind of like the dagger. You know what I mean? You know, I was the dagger, and I was sitting at home and just looking at this, and you know, I, I kind of felt like emotional because I felt like that. You know, I should have been out there. I should have been out there helping my team. 
you know, I'm used to going to the Eastern Conference Finals, the finals, and, but uh, here it's been a great challenge. But uh, it's not over to the fat lady scene. I don't see too many fat ladies around here. The NBA's leading rebounder. He had 1,367 rebounds, and there is his sidekick here in Salt Lake City, Madonna. They have been spotted from time to time, and this whole area has just been Madonna and Dennis Rodman crazy. And gee, Mom, look, I'm on camera. <laughs> the material girl, the queen of rock, Madonna here. And you should have watched as she came in. Everyone was gathering around. Here is Stockton from outside. Well, Gary, San Antonio starting off this game very, very well. 15 points. They scored in the first quarter. Tonight, they're standing on 14 already with 6.37 left. Last Tuesday, only 15 points in the first quarter of the game. And this guy is shooting much better as David Robinson has really struggled early in the series. He now has nine points already. 16-13, San Antonio. Robbie now three of four for the night. 6.17 to go in the first quarter. Here's Carl Malone. Malone with the look against Dennis Rodman. Robinson with a rebound. See, normally Dennis Rodman won't go out and tighten down on the challenge on the outside shot because he likes to stay back for the rebound. That time he got up and made Carl Malone miss. John Lucas said we just got to get some shots to drop. Well, they've started to drop here in this first quarter. Shooting 38% of the series, 32 on Tuesday, and Willie Anderson with a three. Anderson has been struggling. He was three of eight on Tuesday night himself. Well, all the San Antonio guards have been struggling, and John Lucas has a warm heart when he sees Dale Ellen hit his first shot. He sees Willie Anderson hit a three. When it comes to Malone, the guards, the game Tuesday night combined with eight of 29 for the field. Here's Corbin with a two, and there's a guy that hasn't been shooting all that well. He had six points on Tuesday night and had his first field goal of the series Tuesday night. And that was his third basket in, in four games. So Ty Corbin's got to feel good too. 19-15, San Antonio with 5.07 here in the first quarter. Dale Ellis had struggled so much in shooting the ball. He hit his first shot, as you mentioned a while ago. That gets away from Robinson, Stockton with a steal. Stockton gets Miguel Knight up in the air and has oh. good body control and nails it anyway, and he has nine points. Oh, Gary, that reload shot, that's a difficult shot. Now, John Stockton shoots that shot, but that's not a shot you go out and practice. The old reload's very hard to make. Robinson and Malone inside. Malone has done such a superb job on David Robinson defensively. Ellis with a three. He's back. He is back. 34 years old, worried about his contract. Agent talking to him about next year. He's been pressing, but he's relaxed tonight. He was one of nine and threes prior to tonight. San Antonio's hit all three of the three-point attempts tonight. 22-17, Spurs. There's Malone. Team Robinson, Robinson with good defense, and Ellis with a rebound. Miguel Knight on the move. Knight has been shooting it well, and that's going to be a turnover and giving it back to the Utah Jazz. Watch the inside. Carl Malone gets by Dennis Rodman, but guess who's there? The Admiral waiting. That's what Jerry Sloan is afraid of. The Admiral takes away the inside game. Malone, and the pass from Stockton. Stockton leading the NBA in assists for the seventh straight year on plays just like that. He's already got three assists tonight. 22-19, the Spurs, and a reach in. Tyrone Corbett reaches in and commits a foul. Tyrone Corbett, a real warrior for this team. He started the last 14 games of the regular season. And look at this, Denver. Trying to even that series up. They are tough in McNichols Arena. Well, Matumbo can make a difference. 3.37 to go in this first quarter. Miguel Knight from outside. The roll's not there, but Spencer stays with it. Jay Humphreys on the move. Humphreys off to Stockton. Stockton to Felton Spencer, and he's stripped and fouled. Felton Spencer has been such an addition to this Utah team. What an improved player he's been. One of the most improved in the NBA. And Felton is going to go on Dale Ellis. You know, Felton Spencer's an interesting story. A, a very highly drafted player out of Louisville. Just 
Gary fell on his face in Minnesota. I mean, basically nobody wanted him. Somebody here, Frank Layden, Scott Layden, somebody saw something in Felton Spencer. Traded Mike Brown for him, and he has resurrected his career. He's been a very valuable player, and he looks like he has a bright future. Well, he's a bright guy. He's an academic uh, All-American. I think what they saw in Felton Spencer was his work ethic. He really works hard. This guy has just willed himself to be a better player. Maybe he was bright enough to get out of that cold weather. <laughs> 22, 19, San Antonio, 3-10 to go. Remember now how miserable a night it was Tuesday in the first quarter for San Antonio. Only 14 points. Robinson out to Willie Anderson. That's a two. That's the best ball movement that I've seen by this team in about three games. And John Lucas said it has been missing. He says we go into the Admiral, but we got to reverse the ball. They did a nice job of reversing the ball because what that does, Gary, is it puts rhythm in your shot and it makes your shots easier to make. Second assist for David Robinson. He had only one the entire game Tuesday night. Rebound is clear by Robinson. He brings it out. That's five now for the Admiral. Miguel Knight with 229. Ellis kicks it out to Anderson. Anderson, who's played so many games this year after missing 76 games in previous three, and he's feeling it now. Well, that was a good rhythm shot there. He got him in the rocket chair, started in, swung back, rocked him, turned, and shot right over. Three for three now for Willie Anderson, and this is a different Utah team. They're shooting 71% right now for the field, and there's a foul on Willie Anderson. Well, if John Lucas had ordered this, he couldn't have ordered it any better. He's off to a spectacular start here. 71% to take a 26-19 lead. Ernie Johnson in Atlanta. They got a great game going on at McNichols Arena as Denver is trying to force a game five against the number one seed in the West, Seattle. It is 73-72. In fact, I see a free throw made. It is 74-72. Denver with about five minutes to go. We will keep you up to speed on that game right now. Let's go back to the Delta Center. Gary Bender and Dick Versace, guys. Bring it back on out. 19 as... San Antonio shooting 71%. This is a different looking team here tonight. Well, and that's a different looking Dale Ellis that we're seeing tonight. Boy, you, Gary, you were right on target when you pointed out that if Dale Ellis hit his first shot, that would be huge for the San Antonio Spurs. And indeed, in the early part of this game, it has been. He is two of three from the field. Willie Anderson is three of three. Utah shooting 57% as we come back into play. Two minutes, four seconds left in the first quarter. 26-19. San Antonio trying to get this back to the Alamo Dome, the game that will be played on Saturday. And it goes. Nice catch by Tilton Spencer, and he draws a foul. Shows you how strong he is. Oh, you talk about execution. I mean, that was a gorgeously executed play. Take a look at this. You're going to see a cross screen, and then you're going to see, well, you're just seeing the tail end of it, but he is a recipient of a back pick. Felton Spencer sealed inside and scored over the trees, including the Admiral David Robinson. That was on Willie Anderson, his second. Felton Spencer is not a good free throw shooter. Gets it there for a three-point play and cuts it to four. 26-22, the Spurs. Boyd Daniels getting ready to come in for San Antonio. He's been shooting the threes very well. Dennis Rodman's been very quiet in the early going. Well, you know, he came out very emotional. The crowd was kind of on him, and uh, now they seem to have forgotten about it. And there is Robinson, a loose ball foul, and that will be his first. In game one, Gary, the only game that San Antonio won in this series, they came out with incredible emotion, and it really overwhelmed Utah. Now, tonight, a game that they feel that they have to win, and that's pretty obvious that they have to win this. They came out with emotion, but that emotion when you're away from home can subside. Look inside now. You're going to see the, the matchup with the Dream Teamers, David Robinson and Carl Malone. Now, Malone checks out. That's called a touch and go. And Malone over, I'm sorry, Robinson over the back. That's not what you call a classic box out. You just touch and turn and go. John Lucas had an interesting point to you of a Dick before the game. He feels these dream teamers played against either so much that they really anticipate things. They really know each other so well, and they cut down some of the moves you might have. Yeah, and I thought that was very interesting because he said that pretty much these guys have learned each other's tricks. And when they play each other, when the two teams play each other, the two dream teamers like to guard each other. 26-24, the Spurs by two. Miguel Knight changed the shot. Rodman tried to follow, and a rebound by Tyrone Corbin. 
They want to push it up at every chance, get into their half-court game as quickly as possible, and execute. That's what Jerry Sloan said this morning. Felton Spencer gets the roll. Oh, right, and he gets some kind of roll. The admiral made him change the shot dramatically. The ball went up in the right-hand part of the rim and rolled in. 7-0 run now by the Jazz, and they tied it up at 26. Robinson rejected by Felton Spencer. Malone saves it into Stockton. Utah with a strong finish here in this quarter, and Rodman rips it down. Well, no one picked up Carl Malone. He was wide open. Normally, Dennis Rodman is the man to guard him. David Robinson was confused about what to do, so nobody did anything. 23 seconds left in the first quarter. Lloyd Daniels from outside with a three. Rebound by Tyrone Corbin. And as a strip by Dennis Rodman. And that'll be backcourt. Jerry Sloan beside himself said, Rodman just threw my man away. Calming down because his team now has possession. That shot missing a moment ago by Daniels. He'd been four of six from three-point land prior to tonight. As they'll have it in now at center court with now 14.7 seconds left in the first quarter. 26 all. San Antonio got off to a good start, but the Jazz have primed even. Watch for the high pick and roll. This is their end of the quarter play. Stockton over Rodman, rebound Robinson. Seven rebounds now for Robinson. Miguel Knight with an effort. They will not find the mark. And we are tied after the first 12 minutes of play. 26 apiece, and David Robinson with a strong first quarter. Nine points, seven rebounds, and two assists. Ernie Johnson in Atlanta. The Spurs and Jazz head to the second quarter, all tied up at the Delta Center. We want to head to McNichols Arena, Denver and Seattle. Game four of that series. If the Sonics win, they're through to the next round. If Denver wins, they go back to Seattle for a game five. Let's turn it over to Al Albert and Dave Logan for bonus coverage, a two-point Sonic lead. The Sonics trying to eliminate the Nuggets here in game four. The Nuggets trying to send it to an incredible fifth game in Seattle. And one point separates these two teams in a game in which the lead has changed hands 25 times. You gotta figure Detlef Shrimp is who they wanna go to inside. The offense has been funneled through him. Crowd thought it was the takeaway by Reggie Williams. Instead, it's the foul. And Detrick Shrimp, who has been the nugget killer in the series. Well, Reggie stepped around, you can see, just at the last minute, reaching around baseline side, but he got caught. Roy doing a good job trying to front him, deny the easy entry pass. Peyton right in the middle of the body with the pass, but Reggie Williams gets caught. And a timeout is taken now by the Nuggets. The Sonics pushed to a fourth game by Denver, who Monday night beat Seattle 110 to 93 in an emotion charge game. And right here again, the Nuggets uh, crowd of 17,171 rising to another level and thrusting the Nuggets on their shoulder. 80 to 79. The Sonics being led by Detlef Schrempf, who has 20. Gary Payton with 19. Although it has not been an energized. Gary Payton. And the last couple of games, Payton has uh, certainly been subpar in this game. The Denver Nuggets, a scrappy team, and this year enters the playoffs for the first time in four seasons. And the Nuggets won 42 games this year. The Sonics won 63, but when they went head to head in the regular season, the Nuggets won two of the four. And that's exactly what they're trying to do now here in the playoffs win the second and send it back to Seattle. The Sonics uh, want to get it done. They don't want a chance of fifth game. Even taken to a fifth game bruises the Sonics ego. And after seeing Phoenix and Golden State in the 140s and game three as the Nuggets scored over 100, this game has been much like basketball in the Eastern Conference in the playoffs. Sonics have focused on Mahmoud Abdul Raouf. He has averaged only 11 points a game in the series and tonight has scored but five, hitting two of his seven shots. Big Sam Perkins has been shut out tonight. Matumbo, 10 points, 10 rebounds. Our last count, he had eight block shots. 
Sonics by one with the ball. And they have the full 24. Askew has gone a long way tonight. McMillan in foul trouble as he's been most of the series. They take it in low. Payton on Raouf. Ten seconds to shoot. Inside, the reverse by Askew. And the Sonics have taken a three-point lead. Right, for a guy who's had a quiet game, Gary Payton with a terrific bounce pass through traffic. 115 and counting. You don't need a three here. You just need a good look at the basket. Well, the time. The Nuggets have opened up the arsenal looking for many threes. The save by Smith. Reggie Williams downtown. That would have tied it up. And the Sonics with the ball. Inside a minute to go. Still time here, but you got to get a stop defensively. George Carl wants a timeout. George Carl has seen the Sonics get it to this point, and he wants to talk it over. Sonics, who have been held to 40% for most of the series, uh, but tonight hitting their shots a little closer to 50%. And the Denver Nuggets now facing the final 53 seconds of the season. We need a stop. Ernie Johnson back at you from Atlanta. Utah has taken a one-point lead over San Antonio in the second period. Let's get out to more bonus coverage of the Sonics and the Nuggets. A three-point Seattle lead with under a minute to play. Al Albert, Dave Logan. Sean Kemp hits the first of the two foul shots. Sonics with a three-point lead. McMillan and the defense comes in. Sam Perkins. Goes to the bench along with Detlef Shrimp. Sean Kemp, 14 points. He's only averaged 13 a game in the series. Nuggets have him under wraps with Lafonso Ellis and Matumbo. And the door is still open for the Nuggets. Down to 40 seconds. Denver trails by three. Robert Pack now in to try to energize Denver down the stretch. Ellis, the pressure now by the Sonic defense pushing the Nuggets. This is the three and the tie. Robert Pack goes downtown. The unlikely source from the outside. Although that's his second three tonight. And the got, I was going to say, he got a good look at the basket, Al. Thirty-three, thirty-two. here, the Jazz, after trailing by as many as seven points in the first quarter, have come back. They have taken the lead. David Benoit, who hit a three a moment ago, misses there, and Lloyd Daniels with the rebound. Benny Del Negro, who started the ball game, but slowed a little bit with a left ankle sprain. And that David Robinson, and David Robinson's off to a very good start in the ball game. He has 11 points. He had nine in the first quarter. Well, don't think for a moment that San Antonio is not still full of life. Now they're finding David Robinson on post-ups in transition. Hard to bang in with a guy that's flying in with the speed of an admiral. And the admiral is shooting only 37% for this series, but doing much better tonight as Hornacek, who had a big game Tuesday night, shooting six of nine for the field for 15 points. Gets that one. 35-34, Utah by one. El Negro on the pick and roll to J.R. Reed. Reed, who had a shot earlier. He's been struggling in the series, shooting 18%. And Felton Spencer saves it to Hornacek. Hornacek then is fouled as a reach in on Lloyd Daniels. All right, let's go back to the finish of that Seattle-Denver game in the Mile High City. Seven seconds to go. The Nuggets have been a thorn in the side of the Sonics all year. They have beaten them three times, twice in regular season and in game number three. George Carl with that last time out, I'm sure telling his team, if you get a clean look at the basket, take it. But otherwise, let's make sure we run this clock down and take a late shot. Worst case, leaving the Nuggets with about three seconds. The two foul shots by Kemp that were missed would have given the Sonics a five-point lead. Pack comes back, hits the three, and we're even Steven. Into the hands of Peyton. 17,171 standing. They're screaming. Nuggets need to stop. Sonics now with a shot clock down to 15 seconds. Peyton said, not yet. Here's Steele, and a steal by Pack. 
He can't control the ball. He fires and overfires. And Seattle will have it for the oh. last three seconds. Almost scripted in Hollywood. Robert Pack may have been thinking ahead when he was growing up. That was the moment you always fantasize. The clock striking down to the final seconds. A tie ball game. And Pack, who was in the slam dunk contest, was perhaps a couple of seconds ahead. Okay, great steal here. You see him reach you with the right hand. He's on his way now, but the ball just leaves his right hand. He's got plenty of time. Robert, I don't think, realized how much time was left. Shot the air ball, but a great now, steal. Watch him reach you with the right hand. 10, 9, you see the clock. And that ball with the bounce just leaves the right hand. Had plenty of time to hold on, but man, oh man, it's kind of way the game is gone. Ups and downs. It seems like the Nuggets are going to pull away. The Sonics answer. They take a seven-point lead, but they can't hang on. If you tuned in and you heard one team had won 63 games this year and the other team had won 42, there is no way to tell the difference. They have to go the length of the court. We'll make sure you don't foul here. A steal! Reggie Williams for the game! Oh! Oh, oh man! The ebbs and the flows, <laughs> and the Nuggets just happy to get it to overtime. Oh, my! Sam Perkins lost the Bonus coverage. The Sonics darn near gift-wrapped one for the Denver Nuggets, but they head to OT tied at 82. We'll keep you up to speed on that, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to the Delta Center. I'm Gary Bender along with Dick Versace. 5.39 to go in this first half. The Jazz lead at 37-34. They trailed by as many as seven points in the first quarter. David Robinson with a strong start. 11 points and seven rebounds. Stockton again acquitting himself well. You can see the Spurs shooting much better. They have been miserable in shooting the ball this series, but that helps when you hit three of eight. And they've gotten a good contribution from Dale Ellis, who's hit two of his first three shots. It was tied after the first quarter at 26, and the Jazz now starting to come on. Well, the, the Jazz are, are, are just a team that's in charge because they're home. They shot better in the first quarter than the Spurs. The Spurs came out with a lot of emotion. Rodney's back, McCann is here. But this is not the place, Gary, where emotion will carry you. You must execute, you must make shots, and you must defend. You're away from home. You don't have the advantage of the crowd. The Jazz now with a 6-0 run against San Antonio. David Robinson. Those shots just weren't there on Tuesday night. Tonight, he's doing a good job, the good looks, and now makes it 39-36 Utah. And the sex with Dale Ellis in his face. Here's David Benoit, who's had a couple of athletic moves that's really got the attention of the crowd. Stripped by J.R. Reed. You mentioned J.R. Reed, very active tonight. He really is, and I, I think there are more than one San Antonio Spur player that's inspired by something that was said in the locker room. Here's Reed, who is shooting so poorly, 18% prior to tonight, and Reed has contributed here. As it's a one-point ball game, he is three of four shooting tonight. Sometimes it's that player that you don't count on, that you don't count on, that will step up when you least expect it. We'll be going back for that Seattle-Denver game when uh, the opportunity presents. We'll keep you posted on that one from McNichols Arena as Carl Malone misses the shot and a loose ball foul. Doug Spencer trying to follow inside, committed the foul. Well, that was an interesting sequence. Malone was fronted. I thought the pass would not get inside, but it, because of his great strength. Now watch Cummings step up on the high side here. See there? But watch the strength of Malone. Now he goes in to score. Good weak side help. David Robinson made him miss. Felton Spencer on the foul. That's a second foul on Felton Spencer. Willie Anderson also is shooting the ball better tonight. He's three of four. He had been struggling. This whole San Antonio team had been struggling, shooting 38% for the series. And Dale Ellis looks like a different Ellis tonight. Well, that's something new. That's the first time I've seen him post up in the whole series. John Lucas is going to the bag of trips. He's going deep into the bag of trips. Anything he can to get some points from his ball club. Now a surge by the Spurs, a 7-0 run as Carl Malone is fouled as he goes inside. Malone just having another outstanding series. J.R. Reed committing the foul. Carl Malone told us before the start of the night they're going to leave it all here. It's going to be but it was the end the, of the whole series tonight. Gary, it was the way he said it. <laughs> 
Look at this in overtime. Denver really giving Seattle fits at home. Winning on Monday night. I'm Gary Bender along with Dick Versace. We are in game four of this best of five with the Utah Jazz leading two games to one. And here is what Carl Malone has done the entire series. And he's off to another good start tonight. Well, he opened up the series with 36 and double figure rebounds. And he's been in double figure points and double figure rebounds in every single game. He just, he's just been uh, uh, just a shining example of consistency. He's six of six from the free throw line inside the shot missing. But they're getting better looks right now, Dick Versace. They're getting some shots inside. And away from the ball now, Dennis Rodman and Carl Malone had a little altercation. Well, if, if we see this, we'll see that Dennis was trying to bring this on. Remember, he told you, Gary Bender, that he may do something physical early in the game. Now you take a look and you be the judge here. They're going to get tangled up. The outlet pass was made. There's no reason for, Rod, uh, for Rodman to stay in there. You saw he had, he had Carl Malone hooked. Malone said, I'll take a little of this. Now watch. The ball's gone. He says, I'll take a little. See the arm still in there? I'll take a little, but I'm not taking any more. And Dick Pavetta saying it's Utah's basketball. And uh, Joe Forte over holding up the time with 336 in the technical against Dennis Rodman. Nope, they're going to call it a double foul now. So it's going to be on both Rodman and Malone. Well, that's interesting. And it, true to form, Dennis said, he told you in your interview that he was going to do something physical early in the game. They did that. And here comes Humphreys inside, and he loses it. It'll be San Antonio's game or ball. You know, the one thing about Rodman, he can really distract you. He can take your focus away, and you start doing all the things you don't want to do. Well, never in this league has a guy who averages 4.7 points in a regular season had such an impact on the game. Dale Ellis shooting with some confidence now, and that's the Ellis that you are expecting to see. He is four of six now, and here's Miguel Knight with the steal. A little break is now has given the Spurs a little extra energy. Here comes Felton Spencer out. David Benoit hit the floor hard. He's getting up slowly. But well, that was a great steal by Miguel Knight, but just as good as his steal was, his decision was bad. Humphreys with the air ball, and he's been shooting so well in this series at 66%. Off it comes to Ellis again. Ellis wants it. This time not there, and Rodman with the rebound, and Ellis will try another one. You knew he wasn't going to miss two in a row. Not that wide open. Jerry Sloan cannot be happy about the wide, wide open shots that Dale Ellis is getting. Dale Ellis with 12 points, and Jerry Sloan's called a timeout. 2.20 to go in this first half. The San Antonio Spurs on the edge of elimination, and Ellis scoring their last six points has given them the three-point lead at the 2.20 mark. Ernie Johnson back with you from Atlanta. The Spurs with a three-point lead in the second period. Meantime, the Denver Nuggets have now taken a five-point lead with under two minutes to go in overtime. More bonus coverage. Al Albert, Dave Logan. Sonics still do not have a field goal in the overtime. Nuggets by five. Sonics still searching for their first field goal in OT. Robert Pack now needs to run some clock. 17 seconds on the shot clock. You need to use as much time as you can. The Nuggets 88, the Sonics 83. Nuggets looking to force it to a fifth and final game. Rejected by Payton. And a foul on Pack, I believe. Dennis will turning away for the moment. This is a shot you don't need. Shot clock at about eight. The 360, but he turns right into the block hand of Gary Payton. Nuggets have outscored the Sonics six to one in overtime. The prohibitive underdog, the Nuggets may do the impossible, send it to a final game. Perkins swoops in, and here the Nuggets on the run. Fast break, Williams calling for the ball. Peyton wouldn't let him get it. And that sinking feeling now for the Sonics and George Carl. Mayhem at McNichols with just 67 seconds to go. Brian Stith trying to get the ball to Reggie Williams. The foul and Stith with 13 second half points can really send a dagger to the 
hearts of the Supersonics with these two. He has made three in a row in the last few seconds. 15 points for Brian Stiff, all in the second half. George Carl with his hands in his pockets. Not much more he may be able to do with 107 to go. And Gary... Gary Bender, Dick Versace in Salt Lake City. San Antonio by one, 44-43, and it comes to John Stockton. Felton Spencer, oh, oh, oh. as the shot clock expires in the big center, able to get it to go in time. Uh, give credit to John Stockton. He could have forced up a bad shot. He gave it to Felton Spencer. I mean, he's a center. He's not used to shooting from the perimeter. He said, hey, big boy, you shoot it. Billy Anderson kicks it out to Ellis. Ellis shooting the ball much better here tonight. David Robinson ducks in. That was Jay Humphreys with a reach in. He got a piece of it. Out it comes to Stockton. Look at Malone fill the lane, but then Rodman comes up with it, and now Dick Pavetta has spotted the foul. And getting up slowly, Willie Anderson. John Lucas is on the floor right now. John Lucas, Gary, is fighting for his NBA survival in He's the playoffs. He's still on the floor. He and is mad. And Dan Crawford tells him to get back. Boy, Carl Malone, does he run the floor? He got down there. You forget how big he is, 6'9", 260-pounder, and he was filling the lane on the break. Well, he's so great at running the floor, and the amazing thing is his bulk. It's not, there's a lot of 6'9 guys who can run the floor, but not with the bulk and the, and the muscular musculature of a, of a Carl Malone. I mean, he, he, he runs the floor in a fashion that you wouldn't think possible because of his size and bulk. Very deceiving. He really is the epitome of a power forward as he misses a free throw there. The foul was on Rodman, his second. That is his first miss from the line tonight. He is six of seven. Jazz by one. They trail by as many as seven as in that first quarter. San Antonio shot a blistering 56%. Started out at 71. And let's go back to Denver for the Sonics and Nuggets. One minute, two seconds remain in OT. The Nuggets have outscored the Sonics 8-1 to one in overtime. Seattle, no field goals in four minutes. McMillan, still goose eggs for the Sonics. And everyone standing at McNichols Arena. Robert Pack now taking his time. The Nuggets looking to milk the clock with a seven-point lead. Spreading it out. Ellis, the high man with 23. And the whistle blows again. The clock is stopped. The foul is on Kemp. His fifth. George Carl has seen in overtime his team not really get that many opportunities. Three field goal attempts. He's had no second chances at all. And game five on the horizon. Sonics were up by three with a little over a minute to go in regulation. Could not put it away. Sean Kemp missed two foul shots. And then Robert Pack in the closing seconds hit a three-pointer. Pack who had hit six three-pointers during the course of the season. 25 for a very emotional Lafonso Ellis. Nine-point lead for the Nuggets. It's their biggest lead in the game. Will the Sonics at least score a field goal in OT? Yes, says Sean Kemp, and the crowd reacts. But the Nuggets will be going to Seattle for a fifth and final game after losing the first two and coming back to win these next two in Denver. Ellis buries the ball and buries the Sonics in game four. McMillan for three. And this place ready to erupt one more time. It has been an emotional two games in Denver. The crowd pumping up the Nuggets. It is a young team. It is an emotional team. And they have ridden that to two wins and a fifth and final game against the top seed, the best record in the NBA of the Seattle Supersonics. The darlings of Denver, the Nuggets, walk off the floor, and for them, they have done the impossible, stretching this series to five. The 1-8 series in both the East and the West will go five games. Denver 94-85 over Seattle. 
in overtime. They have reached the half at the Delta Center. Utah and San Antonio tied at 46 apiece. The Reebok Halftime Report is next. The Reebok Halftime Report is brought to you by Reebok, who reminds you that on Planet Reebok, there are no rules. All right, the San Antonio Spurs are trying to force a Game 5 against the Utah Jazz. It's a dead heat at the break, 46 apiece. This is the Reebok Halftime Report. I'm Ernie Johnson. This is Fred Carter, and forcing Game 5 is the theme of the night. In the 1-8 and eight series, Atlanta needing a win just to go back home, wins it, and then Denver Wins at home in OT over the Seattle Supersonics. How stunning is it to you that Denver's still in this thing? Well, you know, Denver's a very good home court team. They really push the ball up and down the floor. Their home court record as opposed to their road record is a tremendous difference. Uh, they have a higher level of energy. It might be the altitude in Denver. Everyone talks about that, and I think it favors the Nuggets up there. And it's one of the few uh, series in which the season series has been played out in the playoffs, 2-2. During the regular season, the home court holding, same story now in the playoffs. How about the Hawks and the Heat? Atlanta winning tonight, so they come back to the Omni. Is this going to sew it up for the Hawks? Uh, I think so. I think Atlanta's going to go back into the building, get Miami in there now, and all of a sudden now I think the, the Heat had their chance. They had to win this ball game to go back into the Omni in Georgia and win. I don't think so. Kevin Lockery says the Heat will come to Atlanta and be all loosey-goosey and ready to play Game 5 on Sunday. We'll take a look at Game 4 when the Reebok Halftime Report continues. The Spurs need a winner. The season's over. They're hanging with the Jazz at the Delta Center, 46 apiece, as the Reebok Halftime Report continues. The story of the game is Atlanta took on Miami tonight, Coach. The man. Darren O'Shea Blaylock. Better known as... Mookie. Yes, indeed. <laughs> he rediscovered the touch. The guy was 9 out of 41 from the field coming in, and he lit it up tonight to give Atlanta another shot to win this thing. Look at uh, some rough stuff. It's not nearly the scale of Saturday night, but... Augman and Rice getting to know each other. Here is that Mookie. Here is that Darren O'Shea. And there's one from the corner. And look at him. He's, uh, what he's done is he's taken off from last night. The other night when he made those final three at the end of the game, he's making the same ones again tonight. And uh, O'Shea is really having a good night for himself. Critical that he comes out of the gate firing, and he did tonight. Miami mounts a run, 11 to nothing, to pull within 59-57. That was Spider with the jam, and Pharrell misses, but Danny Manning had himself a big night, big follow on an eight to nothing run. Hawks were up 70 to 58 at that point. The fans head for the exits, and Atlanta heads back home, a 103-89 winner. Lenny Wilkins looking for a huge game out of Mookie, and he got it. He spent some uh, extra time with uh, with Brian Winters, our shooting coach. Uh, yesterday and I thought it really helped him because he got his stroke back but at the same time I wanted to encourage him I told him if you're open you got to shoot the ball uh, you know I don't want rush shots right. but if you're open I want you shooting the ball with confidence I want us attacking the basket and uh, he did that he gave us great lead leadership out there and uh, everybody came in and played well you know game five now back in Atlanta you know Kevin's telling his team hey guys we won game one there we can do it again what do you tell your team in preparing for that game well we're playing at home uh, we're gonna be confident but we also have learned too that we know how we have to play defense now and everybody when they come to that arena they're gonna come ready to play defense or they sit down I mean that's just the way it is and and I think that uh, we know it's not gonna be a cakewalk so we'll be ready the series on the line Sunday at Atlanta's Omni we'll be back with more on the Reebok halftime report right after this and welcome back to Atlanta the results are in the votes have been tallied by 27 NBA coaches including this man and the NBA all-rookie team. The first team is made up of Chris Webber, Anthony Hardaway, Vin Baker, Jamal Mashburn, and Isaiah Ryder. Tough to argue with any of those. Fred Carter had them all on his ballot. The second team of rooks, Dino Raja of Boston, Nick Van Exel of the Lakers, Tony Kukoc of Chicago, and Lindsey Hunter of Detroit. And of course, I'm not leaving out the guy in the middle, <laughs> Sean Bradley. It's tough to miss that guy, but you had to miss him for quite a bit of the season this year, and, and your fortunes took a tumble with that guy out of there. How is he feeling, and what is the uh, prospect for him coming back next well, year? Uh, Sean really had a good year for us. It was really unfortunate for him to sustain the injury that he had because we were playing some pretty good basketball. Uh, right now, he's running. He's able to shoot the basketball. And if we were playing in the playoffs today, Sean Bradley would be able to play. As a matter of fact, he's scheduled to work with Lee Haney. Lee Haney doesn't know that we're going to pull a big switch. 
we're going to take his body and give Sean his body, so we'll see how that looks. <laughs> I'm thinking Lee's going to nix this contract if that's the trade-off he's going to have to have. We wish you luck next year with the Philadelphia 76ers. Fred, Thank it's you. been great to have you Thank here. You. It's Thank our you. pleasure. Good. Had a lot of fun. All right, it's a Reebok Halftime Report. It's Fred Carter in the third period hanging uh, just moments, of, moments away, or minutes away, or it's coming up, 46 apiece. Reebok Halftime Report has been brought to you by Reebok, who reminds you that on Planet Reebok, there are no limits. Welcome back to the Delta Center in Salt Lake City. We're tied at 46. We've been tied five times. And San Antonio on the verge of elimination has played a much better first half, shooting the ball so much better. Well, Gary, you know, it's been a strange series. The average margin of victory, 21 points. I thought most of the series would be like the first half tonight. Dale Ellis has stepped up very, very big for San Antonio tonight. They really needed him. Right now, you're going to see Dennis Rodman, you know, make a contribution. You have to kind of watch carefully. He's going to set the screen that frees up Dale Ellis right there, and that's why Dale Ellis has all that room. He shoots it right over Felton Spencer. Two for two at three-point land. Look what he has done in the first three games. In fact, he was one of nine from three-point land prior to tonight, so that is an encouraging sign for John Lucas. Carl Malone, on the other hand, not shooting as well in the first half, three and nine, but again, what a force he is. Well, there's that blonde man again, but he's caught in a front situation, and when you front Carl Malone, you're going to pay the price when you've got John Stockton throwing the ball because he's going to get the ball up and over, and it resulted in a very easy shot for Carl. And John Stockton with five assists, and you can see the assists uh, really have picked up. And uh, the Spurs were just having a tough time getting the ball, rotating it around. But John Lucas has it going tonight. Well, you, here's a key stat, the 12 assists for the Spurs. They only had 13 in the whole game last night. John Lucas told you and I, Gary Bender, that, hey, he's got to get his team to move the ball, especially to reverse it from one side of the court to the other. And we all agree that that helps the shooters as well because it puts rhythm in their shot. Everybody getting a lot of touches of leather. If you're wondering about the worm, Dennis Rodman in the first half had two points and six rebounds. He took only two shots. One of those was a follow, and now he's over there visiting with Jerry Sloan at the Utah bench, having a nice little conversation as he retreats to set it up defensively for San Antonio. Well, the bottom line is, you know, he has this larger-than-life image of himself, and it grows daily. He's still got to get it done, and he's just still got to help make his team win a basketball game. Boy, Del Negro really ran into a pick that time by Malone, and Felton Spencer then is going to have a jump ball as he tried to get it out of that mass of arms. You know, the Spurs started out hitting three of three from three-point land. They've missed their last five, so they need to reestablish that as they start the second half. Well, I hope, I hope that uh, they understand what made it work for them in the first half. It was ball movement that helped the perimeter shooting and some unselfish screening by Dennis Rodman. John Stockton, seventh straight year, leading the NBA in assists, over a 1,000 for the year. Malone misses, he's three of 10. Out it comes to Jeff Hornacek. Hornacek with a tray. And Rodman and Corbin go up, and it's going to be a foul on Tyrone Corbin. And that's what they missed the other night, was a guy getting on the boards, getting up, and creating some opportunities for the San Antonio team. Well, you look at what Dennis did in the first half. Only six rebounds, one for two from the floor, two points, and one assist. However, he has energized his team, and he's done a lot of unselfish things, and he guards Carl Malone. There's that chop move you've talked about. Carl Malone chopped it away from David Robinson. You've alluded to that from time and again, and now that ball is going to go off of Utah to go back to San Antonio. Well, that's one of those things that the Dream Teamers learn when they played against each other. They found that there's certain weaknesses each other had. They never had such sustained period of time to play against each other. And Carl Malone guarded David Robinson, you know, in the practices and found out that that shot move he makes is pretty effective against the Admiral when he brings the ball back. Both teams looking for their first points here in the second half. We played a minute. Dale Ellis hustles it down, and Stockton then gets away from him to David Robinson. Benny Del Negro will set it up now for the Spurs. Del Negro became the starting point guard late December for San Antonio, and then Hornacek gets, gets tangled up with David Robinson, and 
commits a foul. So David Robinson in the first half with 13 points and eight rebounds. Five of 10 for the field, and David Robinson has been struggling for the field, shooting 37% of the previous three. And the ball chopped away again, and it's going to be San Antonio's ball. Our score here is tied at 46. We've been tied five times in this ball game. No one has scored in the second half of play. Gary Becker and Dick Persace, glad to have you here for game four in this best of five series. Dale Ellis has been the key player for San Antonio. Started off big in the first half, hit two threes. Major contribution from the perimeter. They have struggled from the perimeter. San Antonio hot from the perimeter tonight. They were 8 of 29 Tuesday night from the perimeter. And there's Malone on a nice beat from Jeff Winnesek. Malone now with 15. Somebody threw a paper airplane. Did you see that go flying right in front of the play? And they have a little warning now coming out here at the Delta Center. Great concentration, though. No one stopped playing. He didn't stop talking either. <laughs> Willie Anderson dumps it into Robinson. They triple him. Here comes Del Negro over Felton Spencer. That was not easy. Well, Del Negro gave way to Miguel Knight for a couple of reasons early in the game. He didn't play real well. He, the, the ankle that he has that he hurt in game three was bothering. Plus, he picked up two early fouls. Knight came in, really didn't get the job done. Luke is going back with Del Negro. Miguel Knight was 0 for 4 shooting in the first half. Was Malone again doing his damage inside. Two quick buckets inside here in the third quarter. Dennis Rodman talking to Joe Forte, the official, unhappy about something. 15-48, Utah with the lead. 9.09 to go in the third. They've been swinging the ball very well, rotating around most of the game, trying to get somebody open. They have, they like to end up doing this. Robinson out there, and there's Dennis Rodman. Always finds some way to get to the ball. Keeps it alive until he can come up with it. Well, a lot of coaches feel that he ought to put the ball back up more often than he does. Very seldom does he put it back up. He always goes back to the perimeter. Uh-oh. Ellis from outside, and there's the three, and what a difference it's made. His third three of the night. Well, Gary, as you just pointed out, the ball movement is what created that shot. There's no rotation that could cover that. 14 points for Ellison. At the other end with a two. See now Rodman yelling at Vinny Del Negro. He wants that shot covered. Yeah, Rodman's not happy right now. He again was talking to Dick Pavetta as they go up the floor. They've now changed Ellis' three to a two. Boy, that looked like a three to me a while ago, but they say it's a two. Well, he may have put his foot on the line. He just missed it, but it certainly looked like it. It was a long two if it was a two. So we're tied at 52. Here's John Stockton. Hung up, gets it to Felton Spencer. Spencer has a block. And there's Rodman now upset. I think they're going to call it either a flagrant. Let's take a look. The veteran but really good has two points, two flagrant points. Let's take a look. Felton Spencer goes up. Rodman hammers him pretty good. And then the little yeah, extra the show. I don't think there would have been a problem with the initial contact. It was this little extra push right there. You could constitute that as an open-handed punch. Rodman with his third personal, and then the technical, the flagrant foul, sending Hornacek to the line. Oh, oh. Jeff Hornacek this year was seventh in the NBA in free throw percentage, as now Rodman talking to John Lucas, and Lucas probably saying to himself, okay, Dennis, let's don't step over that line again. He's probably said that quite a few times this year. But he challenged Felton Spencer, and I think your point's well taken. Had he left it alone after the block, instead of that little push at the end, nothing would have happened in the flagrant foul department. Felton Spencer, not a good free throw shooter, shooting 61% for the year, one of four tonight. The Dennis's feeling was, hey, I made a great play, and then I was just celebrating. But you can't celebrate by shoving the guy that you just went and challenged. So he has three fouls now as Spencer gets the second half of the free throws and gives the Jazz a two-point lead. 
Utah trying to close this one out. They don't want to go back to the Alamo Dome in San Antonio. Dale Ellis, quick shot. That's where he likes to shoot from. And Robert comes up with it again. Boy, is he playing with enthusiasm. Wow, he's amazing. Here's Anderson from outside. And Rodman over the back. That'll be his fourth. Well, John Lucas has got to get him out now, and he, and he will. But, hey, you can't save him for next year. Watch the hustle of Dennis Rodman. This is why a man who averages 4.7 points per game can affect the outcome of the game. Now he's trying to get back in. He knows the shot is going to go up. He wants to get back involved, but he started climbing the back of Felton Spencer. And Lucas is making no move to get him out of there, even though he committed his fourth foul. Here is Malone and a sweeping hook. And Rodman has incited this jazz crowd, if nothing else, right now. Timeout is called by San Antonio. 56-52, Utah. The NBA Playoffs on TNT are brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. And by Dutch Boy, give your home the look that lasts. The Jazz by four, and look at the emotions of this game. The fourth foul to Dennis Rodman. And Carl Malone and the crowd into it. Really reacting to Rodman's fourth foul. As Rodman coming back after being suspended for game number three Tuesday. Into Robinson, and we're going to have a foul. You know what's interesting about this game? Marty Aronoff just pointed out. Robinson, who was third in the NBA in the regular season in blocks, has no blocks tonight or in the game Tuesday night. Well, you know, other than game one, the Admiral hasn't been anything close to himself. I have to believe that all the disruptions from Dennis Rodman inwardly are bothering him. As an end result, the Jazz has scored 20 points in the paint. They've really been able to operate inside. Here's Willie Anderson. Pulls up short. Ellis tried to tip it, and Hornacek is fouled by Willie Anderson. At the conclusion of tonight's game, Dick Versace and I will be selecting the Budweiser player of the game, and Budweiser will donate $1,000 in his behalf to the United Negro College Fund. You get the sense right now, Dick, that uh, San Antonio's got to be careful with their emotion. Something a little bit off track right now. Well, I would add patience. They need to continue to be patient. They showed good patience and ball movement early. Right now, I'm seeing a lack of patience. Uh, I would think that you've got to categorize the last shot that Willie Anderson took as a questionable shot at best. John Lucas wants to make sure that he holds those number of difficult shots down to a minimum. That was an illegal screen set up by Felton Spencer, his third foul. The Jazz by four, six and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Dale Ellis to Del Negro. Six seconds on the shot clock. Robinson trying to take Malone on the dribble. They double it. One second, and the shot counts as Robinson just got rid of it. I mean, that was incredible because John Stockton came over and actually grabbed the ball. Had two hands on leather, legit. Admiral ripped it away and still got the ball in the basket. 17 points now for David Robinson. His high for the series is 25. He's averaging 17-7 in the series. Here's Spencer. And Rotman comes down to the rebound. That's his 10th. He had a high of 32 this year. Well, John Lucas told us before the game he wouldn't be surprised if Dennis Rodman came out and got 30 rebounds tonight. Nine seconds on the shot clock. Four. Here's Del Negro with the two. Iron Corbin trying to keep it alive, but Malone's got the rebound. Into Malone. Robinson. Good defense. Malone goes again, and Robinson commits a foul. You get it in that low. Robinson had no chance, and he's committed his third foul of the night. Well, that was a tremendous second effort by Carl Malone. He got a very deep post up, missed the first shot. Actually, the Admiral made him miss it, but he was right there to get his own rebound and get it back in. Dick, let's take a look at tonight's Chevrolet scoreboard as Atlanta has now evened that one up. They'll go to a game five. 103-89, and Denver winning two in a row in the Mile High City, 
five. That young Denver team is growing up. Well, I keep saying it, Matumbo, Matumbo, Matumbo. He is going to be a man in this league that is always going to be able to affect games by himself. His presence in the lane grows in stature every year. Talk about affecting a game. Here's Malone with 21 points. Eight rebounds. He is 9 of 10 for the free throw line. Utah by four. In the first quarter, the Spurs led by as many as seven. And the Jazz led by five. At the stage of the second quarter, there's Felton Spencer ripping it out to Hornacek. Hornacek thought about a three, gets hung up. Malone saves it and gets it up, and then Robinson with the rebound. Well, that would have been a great recovery, but I would have been able to pull that one up. Carl could not get his hand on the ball. It just bobbled and bobbled, and finally had to kind of tap it up and couldn't get it in. Willie Anderson misses the easy shot inside. But Robin gives him a new life. Ellis, rebound clear by Hornacek. Four and a half minutes to go, third quarter. And the San Antonio shots now are coming with very little ball movement. Not the kind of ball movement and rhythm shooting that they got early in the game. And that's what's led to their demise this entire series. 8 of 29, perimeter shooting on Tuesday. Tyrone Corbin, Felton Spencer with the rebound. Jay Humphreys will try one. Very, very unselfish inside outside pass by Felton Spencer. Got the offensive rebound, extra possession for his team. Inside, he passed it out to Jay Humphreys. That's his first hit of the night. He's one of six. He's been shooting so well. Finds that one, and it's now 60-54. Biggest lead of the ball game now for the Jazz. Anderson touch shot. Felt Spencer just seems to get a hand on the ball at all times. Out it comes to Humphreys. Utah on a little surge, a little run. Hornacek adds or tries to add to it. Felt Spencer can't get it. Rodman working hard on the defensive boards, and he calls a timeout. Time 12 rebounds for the Worm. It's going to be a 20-second timeout, and the reason this guy rebounds so well is the tremendous energy and stamina. He just never wears down. Well, you know, I, I've said many times I, I enjoyed my two and a half years with him in Detroit. I always marveled at what he could do physically, and when we used to run the three-lane lane fast break drill with no defense, Gary, you would be shocked at how much speed he really has. And I always said that if this guy was a 440 sprinter, he would own the world's record. He just kind of prances out there, doesn't he, when he runs. Watch this. This is the effort that he comes up. Just a good battle. Now watch him run back. He's, he's tireless. He has boundless energy. Matches up with Felton Spencer. Ties his arm behind his back. A little hammer lock there. 12 rebounds for Rodman. He averages here 17.3. He's the first to win three straight rebounding titles since Moses Malone accomplished that feat. Look at the shooting here in this quarter. Really dropping off. Spurs are dropping back to where they've been a lot of this series. Utah not shooting that well themselves. Well, let's look to see if they get the ball movement. They're certainly making an attempt at the ball movement, but there's a lot of standing around as well. Robinson not there again. Give Malone credit. That big body as it comes out to Lloyd Daniels. 60-54, three minutes to go in the third. What this team sorely needs is some penetration. And Miguel trying to do that, and it's going to be off of Utah with 11 Good seconds on the shot clock. Even though Miguel Knight did not play well early when he came in for Vinny Del Negro, he did provide some spark with his penetration. Let me show you why this is a good, unselfish play by Felton Spencer. There's Ty Corbin missing the shot. Felton Spencer's going to get the ball in the lane. All right, feeds it right there. He gets it right here. He could come back and challenge. He instead decides to go inside, outside. Very unselfish play. Finds Jay Humphreys. He nails the two. And the first shot of the night for Humphreys that went as we come back now, and Lloyd Daniels able to hit the shot inside and cuts it back to four. Felt Spencer, by the way, with eight points and seven rebounds. That's right at about his average. He's been at about eight points and eight rebounds a game all season long. 233 left in the third. Malone losing his footing. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Hornacek and Lloyd Daniels got a piece of it. Daniels now is indicating that Hornacek pushed off. So Dan Crawford is going to indicate, though, 
It's going to be on Hornacek. Daniels leading his case, and that's one time he got the verdict to go his way. <laughs> Very seldom do you see the verdicts go that way when there's such a demonstrative plead. However, John Lucas was telling us about Lloyd Daniels. He said that Lloyd Daniels, because he wasn't a college player, still has a lot to learn about the game of basketball as far as floor balance is concerned, shot selection, but he doesn't question his skills and says in time he's going to be a wonderful NBA player. They called that foul on Felton Spencer a blocking foul, his fourth. So not on one to set, it was on Felton Spencer. Backing in now is Robinson and off the glass. David Robinson. Uh, it. That's too good a look. Uh, the, the, the Admiral got a wonderful shot there basically because Carl Malone got caught behind. The Admiral made a fake to the middle, then throws him and shot it off the glass. Oh! Tom Chambers has checked into the ball game. He's driving with another rebound. His 13th of the night. Miguel Knight driving through it away. He's saying it was deflected or tipped, but Dick Pavetta will have nothing of that as Utah will inbound again. Well, you know, if you're Dennis Rodman's teammate, when he gets the ball in the lane and you're standing on the perimeter, you should be alert because he's going to throw the ball out to you. Seven rebounds in this third quarter for the Worm. Worm is set. And he gets the roll. Well, that's a major shooter's roll, a major crier. Set a back pick, stepped out, got a little window, and put one up and let it bounce around and cry and fall. 62-58, a minute 25 left in the third. Robinson trying to post up inside against Malone. Malone, that big body really lays some weight on him. And Robinson back again. And Robinson now is 9 of 17 from the field. He has 21 points. Well, the Admiral Gary is heating, heating up, and that spells trouble because no one plays him better than Carl Malone. So if he starts to score, uh-oh. That's a personal foul. It's going to go on David Robinson, and that's his fourth as he was pushing off. Let's look at it. Well, you saw the Admiral there. That was the one that he made where he created the space. He kind of froze Carl Malone and got up over it. Nice, easy shot for him. Well, Robinson was pushing off, and as an end result, he has picked up the foul, and Hornacek goes to the line. They're really calling him inside earlier, Felton Spencer. And now David Robinson picking up the foul as Hornacek goes to the line. Well, they brought a strong crew here. Dick Pavetta, one of the strongest uh, officials, not to mention that he's Italian, in the NBA. <laughs> but uh, they're under control, and, and they've got this game under control, and that's what you want. You want a good basketball game. Jazz now 17 of 21 from the free throw line. The Spurs have had only five attempts. They've hit three of them. And remember, David Robinson led the NBA in both attempts and makes from the free throw line. Ellis with a three. Rodman with a putback. A little cheerleading afterwards. And it's a two-point game as we come down to the last 45 seconds of the third. Eight offensive rebounds for Rodman. 14 total for the game. Eight seconds on the shot clock and ten for Humphreys. Miguel Knight plays in defense, has a collision as he tries to get over to the ball. It's going to be on Miguel Knight as Stockton now will come back into the lineup and Jeff Hornacek will check out. So the Jazz very busy at the free throw line. We'll go there once again. Humphrey's a little shaken up at time as he's walking around. He hit pretty hard with Miguel Knight on the baseline area. Well, he did, but he, you know, he got uh, tangled up and, and, and pushed, and it looked like someone stepped on his foot, and it looked like he might have gotten hurt there. He got the weight off of him, fell out of bounds, and Dennis Rodman went over and helped him up. You sound surprised. 65 62. Dennis Rodman will always surprise you. Boy, look at the difference at the free throw line. Humphreys gets the roll. 66 62. 32.8 seconds left in the third. Little pick and roll. Robinson wheels in. Trip to the ball. Boy Daniels, Rodman's got it. Malone lands on top of him. And so they're going to jump it up. 
we talk about a guy who averages 4.7. How does he help a team? How does he affect the team? Little things like defense, little things like extra possessions on offensive rebounding, little things like loose balls, little things like scrappiness. Yeah, he can be a little wacky at times, but he can certainly change the complexion of the game. He's a specialist with great effort. Gary, you always want him on your team. And here's Rodman coming up with it. 13 seconds left in the quarter. Four-point lead for Utah. Stockton running Miguel Knight out. Knight with two. Got it. Good effort by Miguel Knight. Uh, he kept himself under control on that reload. Two-point game. Knight is one of five as we come to the end of the third quarter. Well, they were tied at half, and right now the Jazz by two. And look at this. The worm with in the third quarter. A total of 14 rebounds tonight. Gary Bender, Dick Versace, and what could be the final quarter of the season for San Antonio as they face elimination as they lose here tonight. Down by two as we go to the fourth quarter. Big difference, the free throw line. Gary, a huge discrepancy at the free throw line. Utah 19 out of 23. Ready for this? San Antonio, only five attempts, they made three. Miguel Knight, Dale Ellis. David Robinson, Lloyd Daniels, and Dennis Rodman opening the fourth quarter. Ellis from outside, and Ellis gets him started in a rather spectacular fashion with a three from outside. Well, that's his third three of the game, and that's the way the game started with Dale Ellis contributing. 67-66 San Antonio, Tom Chambers. Up to Jay Humphreys. Humphreys will try it too. Look at Rodman. Look at Rodman. And he, did he get the timeout? No, he did not. He tried to get a timeout, but he stepped over the end line. It'll go to Utah. Well, that's the in vogue timeout. I mean, everyone around the league is doing that now. Every time you fall out of bounds, let's take a look. Dennis Rodman is going to hustle like crazy. Jay Humphreys misses the shot kind of badly. Big, huge bounce on it. Tommy Chambers chases it down. See Dennis looking at the official, trying to get that timeout, but he was already out of bounds. Spurs now scored seven straight points. The three here in the fourth quarter to take a one-point lead. David Benoit in the lineup now. He'll inbound. It's Malone, Stockton, Benoit, Tom Chambers, and Jay Humphreys. We were tied at the first quarter, tied at half. Started this fourth quarter with Utah having a two-point lead. Spotting a foul. Dale Ellis is the guy who picked it up. That will be his second foul. Of course, the first team foul against the Spurs in the fourth has been Wawel inbound again. Utah does not want to go back to San Antonio. They don't want to avoid that in every way they can. As oh. Chambers wide open and stopped him with like a, a quick draw from the hip on that pass. Oh, a blue darter, a thread the needle. Nobody saw it. Eight assists now for the NBA's best in that department. Jazz by one. Ellis, that's where he hit the three a moment ago. Now he'll try it too. Rodman, the put back, he got it. He was strong enough and drew the foul as well. I mean, that was amazing what Dennis did there. Somehow he got the inside position. He's the guy that's supposed to be blocked out. He gets the inside position, gets fouled, and still muscles it up. Let's take a look. Watch the right-hand side of the basket. See him fight with Tommy Chambers. He gets the inside position. Carl Malone, the powerful Carl Malone comes over, grabs his arm, and still gets it up and in. And that's the third foul on the mailman. Robin with 15 rebounds, nine offensively, and six points. Now with seven. <laughs> Did you see that, that little point? He went on point there well, after was, hitting the free throw. Pointing to all those worm balloons that they shake behind or in front of the free throw shooter. Well, Madonna's sitting in that area. Maybe he's pointing to her. Here is Carl Malone wheeling inside, and he's fouled. Is it on Rodman? If it is, it's his fifth. It's either Rodman or Daniels. It's on Lloyd Daniels. Tomorrow on TNT, starting 8 o'clock Eastern, the Knicks and Nets. The Knicks leading that series two games to one. Bob Neal and Hubie Brown will be there to describe that one. 
And tomorrow, 10.30 Eastern, the Rockets and Trailblazers are Rockets leading that series two games to one. Ron Thulin and Doug Collins courtside at that one as Malone. From the free throw line here tonight is 10 of 11. You know, this game has been an amazingly well-played game for as intense as it, as it is. Only eight turnovers for San Antonio and only nine turnovers for Utah. We kind of expect that for Utah. They were the one of the best this year. They were turning the ball over second fewest of anybody in the NBA. They did have 21 turn turnovers on the first game this year in this series, the playoffs, but they've settled back in. Here is Lloyd Daniels. Out it comes tonight. Six seconds on the shot clock. Miguel Knight's hit a couple of shots now. Well, when Miguel Knight starts to hit the perimeter shot, he's doubly dangerous because he's the best penetrator that San Antonio has at the point guard. Spurs by three. The biggest lead the Spurs had was seven in the first quarter. Utah has led by as many as six. Malone. We have a one-point game. Well, Jerry Sloan likes Carl Malone inside. He lets him slip to the perimeter because he says, I have confidence in his outside shooting, but I'd like him to always return to the block. Miguel Knight trying to take Stockton on the dribble. Oh, what a play. And Miguel Knight now has six points, and he'll have a chance for a three-point play. Well, Miguel Knight is sometimes maligned for not being able to finish. Watch the shake and bake crossover here. Inside, a lot of challenge. Finishes very well that time. Here's tonight's Dutch boy in the paint. Spurs, second chance points. Doing very well in that department. Gary, that's dangerous for, for Utah. Those are hustle points. And that's, you don't like to see such a discrepancy if you're the coach of the Utah Jazz. You don't like to see your team being out hustled. Dennis Rodman really makes the difference. Well, Rodman with nine of those offensive boards. You also saw in that Dutch boy the paint how much better Robinson shooting the ball. But you, you, you know that he's not going to continue to have games like he had in the first three games shooting so poorly. What you're seeing tonight is what you normally see throughout the season for the Admiral, David Robinson. Dale Knight completes the three-point play. The Spurs lead it by four. Jay Humphreys with that high pick from Felton Spencer. Roy Daniels playing the good defense, and it comes to Malone. Malone backing in on Rodman, a little jump hook. Look at Rodman, just tipped it to himself. So reminiscent of how he gets so many of those rebounds. Double team comes out of there. He's calling a timeout now. And uh, he skinned his knee pretty good there. He came down hard on that knee. He was off balance trying to protect the ball. He hit pretty hard. Let's look at it again. Well, let's take a look to see what happened to Dennis. Carl Malone goes into the lane, takes a sweet hook here, can't quite get it down, flips out. There's that man again, the demolition man, scrambling, double team, jam, falls on his knee, calls a timeout right there. Dennis Rodman with his 17th rebound and the presence of mind to call timeout. San Antonio's got the basketball, they have a four point lead. Miguel Knight has really helped him here in this fourth quarter. He has seven points in the ball game. This has been their problem, having a proven point guard that can run this team offensively. Four seconds on the shot clock. Knight again. Then Wall high. Tips it off to Humphreys. No numbers. Humphreys is an end result. Pulls it out to Stockton. Felton Spencer, Robinson gets up and blocks it. That's his second block of the night. And San Antonio's got it back, and San Antonio, the prospects getting brighter that they could get this to a game five. Robin motioning to Robinson take it, and he does take it inside. We have a blocking foul. And normally the play they run over there is Dennis Rodman will go up on the wing and set a back pick for Dale Ellis. He stood down on the block. He looked like he was asking for the ball, and he went, no, 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 David, you take it yourself. Carry us. And Felt Spencer has committed his fifth foul on that particular move. Robinson to the line, Tom Chambers will come in after this first free throw. 
And they haven't had very many opportunities to the line, have they? Okay. They have not. It's a dramatic difference. But they've managed to stay in this game with some tremendous outside shooting. David Robinson is having a wonderful night. And Dennis Rodman is stirring things up. 17 rebounds to this point. Spurs are 6 of 8 from the line. This is Robinson's first free throw since way back in the first quarter. That's, that's, that's amazing when you consider he goes to the line more than any other player in the league. 76-71. Five-point lead now for San Antonio. Chambers, the veteran, running left-hander. Rebound, Roy Daniels. Daniels has been doing a strong job. Oh, what a and Stockton with a steal. John Stockton coming up with a theft. 7.45 left in the game. Stockton to Malone. Malone with Robinson out. And again, that's a dynamic duo again of Stockton and Malone. Malone with 26. Gary, what a sequence. John Stockton, his 10th assist, stole the ball, called the play, set it up, got his teammate a shot, knows the score in time. Miguel Knight takes it to the hole. Malone with a rebound. Boy, they sent a tough pick on Stockton that cleared Miguel Knight. And then Chambers lost it off of his foot. Tom Chambers, who's been a real addition to this team coming off the bench, led him in scoring 37 different games. Jerry Sloan's team down by three with 7-13 left in the game. And ominously, Jeff Hornacek sitting on that bench. Maybe it's because of the size of San Antonio. Lloyd Daniels is in, along with Miguel Knight in the backcourt. Inside, seven minutes to go. Daniels against Jay Humphreys. Malone with the rebound. That's his 11th. Stockton to Benoit. Oh, -ho! David Benoit. That'll get the crowd in the game. And it cuts. San Antonio's lead to one. John Lucas called 15. That's the high pick and roll. There's the pick and the roll, and they'll have to reset it again. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Off to Ellis. Ellis not able to get it. Rodman fights for it desperately. He's out of bounds. It'll be Utah's basketball. Now they're going to call a foul, a loose ball foul. Joe Forte over there, calling the foul. <laughs> and Rodman with his reaction to that. It's going to go on Humphreys. Jay Humphreys committed the foul. <laughs> Dennis acting like he found a friend. <laughs> Spurs still by one, 6.15 left. Hornacek is getting ready to check in. To Robinson, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Miguel Knight, leaner, tough shot. Followed by Rodman up there. Benoit's got it. Rodman almost pulled it up. Inside the chamber. Chambers with the left hander got it. He was wide open. Nobody saw. Finally, John Stockton got it to him. Got it to him late. Tommy Chambers able to get it down. You see John Lucas calling the play. His team now trailing by one. The Jazz on a 6-0 run. Stockton now with 12 assists in the ballgame. 77-76, Utah. The crowd standing as Stockton comes up with a steal. Ahead to Humphreys. Willie Anderson tries to block it. Nice change to the left hand by Humphreys. Sensational pass by John Stockton. A no-look three-quarter court pass. The crowd totally involved. Ball. You will love this. Watch when John Stockton gets the ball. He is jammed and challenged. Who thought that he could see this well and pick out Jay Humphreys streaking down the court? Now Humphreys is challenged by Willie Anderson. Puts a little double clutch in his shot and finishes with a gorgeous finish. And an 8-0 spurt for Utah. And in that spurt, Stockton with four assists and a steal. He has six assists this quarter alone. 13 for the game. And along with 13 points, three steals, Gary, and only two turnovers. 
The Jazz, 79. The Spurs, 76. There's that run in the last 223. See, now the tough thing for San Antonio right now is not overcoming your opponent, but overcoming what your crowd, the home crowd, does to your opponent. We can understand why the Jazz are so tough at home. They have won seven straight at home, going back to the regular season of play. Here is Ellis outside, and that'll quiet him a little bit. Well, that was a great call by John Lucas. He set up the pin down for Dale Ellis. He was wide open, nailed it. That's the Spurs' first field goal in the last four and a half minutes as Malone will jump hook. He gets it in low like that. It's impossible to stop him. Well, you know, Dennis Rodman with his quickness bothers Carl Malone a little bit. And that ball kind of lipped and rolled in, tried, but fell. Guess who got the assist? Stockton, number 14. Robinson has it stripped. Willie Axel, right play. Play, but Stockton to Benoit. It's been the John Stockton show here in the fourth quarter. Knight to David Robinson. He's fouled by Tom Chambers. Stockton has just been superb. When you see this loose ball, you won't, Tommy Chambers taps it. You won't believe that John Stockton can come up with this. You can't realize the distance he made up to get it. And then he just bats it, puts it up to David Benoit, says, take it yourself, big guy. You do it, you do it. He was cheerleading, wasn't he? He sure was. Look at the numbers on John Stockton. During the course of the regular season, he averaged 12.6, 1,031 assists. And here tonight, playing up to those standards and above it. Well, John Stockton, in the last three and a half minutes, Gary Bender, five assists, one steal, one block. David Robinson misses the free throw, 83-78. This place is deafening right now. Robinson now is five of eight from the line. See what it's like trying to shoot a free throw into those balloon worms. They jump out, drop John Stockton. David Benoit, who's played very well in this fourth quarter. Carl Malone with six seconds on the shot clock. Well, that's the extent of Carl Malone's range. That's about as far as he shoots, but he nailed that one. He has 30 points. Here is Robinson, and Robinson with a two. The high in this series for Malone is 36, with 30 here tonight. He's had 17 of those 30 in the second half of play, and Stockton fouled by Dale Evans. Got Lucas say, come on out, extend the defense, get after these guys. Well, that, I think that's very good strategy. He, he is... He is aware of what John Stockton is single-handedly doing to his team. So what he's saying is, I want the ball out of that man's hands. I don't want it back in his hands. So he tried a couple of double teams. Didn't work. Approaching three minutes left in this one. Maybe the entire season for San Antonio. The pin one. Stockton with another assist. for John Stockton. He's just taken over the game. Dale Ellis from the corner. Robinson tries to save it. Chambers comes out to Benoit. Three on one. Benoit to the hole. Stockton in this quarter with 10 assists. Miguel Knight puts up one. Robinson tries to follow. They'll reset it. 2.18 left in the game. Ellis and Dale Ellis with a three. As the Spurs come clawing back. 89-84 Utah. That's the fourth tray of the night for Dale Ellis. I'm not so sure I wouldn't have used the timeout after that last basket. That Benoit basket. Quiet down the crowd. Take a chance. No sense in saving the timeout for, for next year. Stockton gets it to the mailman. Malone will go to the free throw line. Well, you know why Stockton and Malone are future Hall of Famers the way they have played here tonight. Uh, they're just an incredible twosome. Both of them are going to be Hall of Famers. Both of them are going to be well, you know, 
uh, ensconced in the in the record book. They're, they are two players that are legendary, not just here in Salt Lake City, but throughout this country. Rodman was assessed the foul, his fifth, as Malone now with two free throws. Malone from the line is 10 of 12. He has 30 points in this game and 11 rebounds. You know, the court vision of John Stockton never, ever ceases to amaze me how when you don't think that he can see things, he does see them. Marty Aronoff, our statistician, just handed me this note. Stockton has seven assists in the last five minutes. Yeah, you're looking at me and I'm shaking my head because he is an amazing basketball player. Malone gets both of them. 91-84. Utah. Close to winning this first round series and await the winner of Seattle and Denver. They're jumping out. They won't let Ellis take the three. Miguel Knight from the corner. Malone to the rebound. Well, see, that's a problem that the Spurs have. John Lucas keeps going to the high pick and roll. John Stockton goes underneath the screen because he doesn't worry about the outside shot of Miguel Knight. Last year, Utah had Seattle down two games to one. They lost this game. They lost in game five in Seattle. They don't want that to happen. They want to close it out. Rebound by Dennis Rodman. Rodman now in the ball game with a total of 19. Dale Ellis floating shot, that'll count, and Ben Waugh has committed the foul. And Dale Ellis has come back tonight. He has 24 points. Well, this is the man that I felt that San Antonio should have been going to. Unfortunately, in the last few trips, it's been Nigel Knight that's taken the shots. But Dale Ellis has got the hot hand tonight. So if John Lucas is going to get his team back into this ball game, to make it a two or three possession game in this last minute. Now you got a minute and seven seconds left. You've got about three or four possessions yeah, depending on how team it team goes. Team You've got to start to look to find ways to get the ball to Dale Ellis. Jeff Hornacek has checked in, replacing Tom Chambers. You think about this, Ellis is averaging only six points a game in this series. Tonight with 24. This is the Ellis you have watched through the years. The all-time leading three-point shooter. Uh, you, were, you were in amazement, amazement, Gary, that he shot so poorly. Rodman right there. That's a follow for two. So Rodman now gives the Spurs some hope. They're down by three, 91-88. He has 20 rebounds, nine points. See, Sleepy Floyd is in the game now. His job, denied John Stockton the ball. And he can do that. He is a defensive stopper. And here's Stockton finally getting it away. From Malone as Sleepy Floyd fighting through the picks. Five seconds on the shot clock. Three. That is a two, and Malone hit it. The mailman's delivered. This is why this shot is available. See the good hard screen by Carl Malone. It forces David Robinson to move over and help on John Stockton, freeing up Malone. The challenge by Dale Ellis. And Carl Malone with 34 points. In this quarter, are you ready for this? Utah has 11 assists, all of them by Stockton, and look at the shooting by the Jazz in the fourth quarter. 71%. Of course, when you get passes like Stockton, you gotta shoot a good percentage. You gotta huh? believe it, and Carl Malone said, I'm laying it all out on this floor here tonight. We're not going to San Antonio. And he's taking the tough shots down the stretch as Robinson and makes it 93-90, three-point game, 33 seconds left. Neither team has any fouls to give. 25 seconds, 15 on the shot clock. John Lucas got a lot of speed in the game. All the defense that he could muster, he's got in the ball game right now. Stockton leaves it short. Robinson with a rebound. Tied out. San Antonio with 12.4 seconds left. Now San Antonio 
has no timeouts remaining. That was their last timeout. Utah has three pulls and a 20. So the Spurs have run out of timeouts. Nobody has any fouls to give, so what you're going to see is legitimate defensive pressure. You also have to be very careful if you are Utah because Dale Ellis has found ways to get open all night. One of the plays that they've been running that's been successful is Dale Ellis sets a back pick for David Robinson. David Robinson comes to the basket. Usually that will draw the defenders off to help on Robinson. And then Dale Ellis has been stepping out, Gary, to the three-point range of where he is very, very accurate, and especially tonight. Obviously, the best three-point shooter in NBA history. Well, he has, over 1,000. And Dick, not to interrupt you, he has 11 points this quarter. So he has stepped up, getting the shot from outside. He is four of eight from three-point land. San Antonio is the team is five of 15. So some of the parts to the puzzle that were missing for John Lucas have returned here tonight. Rodman with his rebounding, Ellis with his shooting. As an end result, they, end result, they still have a chance to pull this one out. Well, you know, there's a, there's a sidebar here, and that is that, you know, if, if this game is a, a very, there's, there's the material girl, and I, I have no idea what she's doing. And I don't know if she knows what she's doing. But, hey, material girl, let me tell you what's going on in this basketball game, and that's this. Dennis Rodman has helped the team. And he's made them aware that when they when he's on the floor, even even in the, the Delta Center, he can make it a ball game. If this is a one or two point loss, how's he going to feel knowing that he took himself out of the game with the actions that he was responsible for in game three? And they will be ending their season if that occurs. Well, the worm has 20 rebounds, nine points. He's hit four of six shots. For John Lucas now, look for him to get the best three-point shooters in the game that he can. I, I thought maybe he would put Lloyd Daniels in. It doesn't look like Daniels is in. Miguel Knight is in. He's got Willie Anderson along with the Admiral, Dennis Rodman, and Dale Ellis. Look for Dale Ellis to get the shot, either on a pin down or a back pick step out. Willie Anderson has hit one three. He's only attempted one tonight. He inbounds the ball. You see the time remaining. The Jazz by three. It comes to Ellis. It's broken up by Malone and Benoit. There was the owner, Larry Miller, out hugging Carl Malone. And the Jazz have won their first round series. Well, it looked like they did run the back pick step out for Dale Ellis. David Robinson didn't really get a line right. You can see Ellis trying to tell him, get out there, I want to set the back pick for you. And now he gets a little bit of a screen, but the play was something that the coaches of Utah made their players aware of, and they said, hey, this is what's coming. That's what they do in the timeouts. They say this is their tendency. They're going to run this play. They didn't execute it very well. Carl Malone steps out, breaks it up, gets it down to David Benoit. It's history. And the Jazz now will await the winner of the Denver-Seattle series. It's even at two games. John Stockton, our player of the game. And what a performance by John. As the Jazz winning it 95 to 90. Our Budweiser player of the game. Look at these numbers. Stockton. 18 assists, 11 of those in the fourth quarter. And John, you guys said you're going to put it all on the line. You didn't want to go back to San Antonio. No, definitely not. That team is, is so talented. And they've had such a great year. Thank you. That uh, We wanted to end it here. This is our best chance. And that guy's really stepped it up in that last quarter. You and Malone have been such a great one-two punch. He took the tough shots. You got the tough passes to him. Well, Carl's been doing that for years, and, and uh, I think he took it upon himself to, especially at halftime, not to let anything interfere with his concentration. And he was determined to go in there and make some big baskets for us, and he did just that. John, you know, I've always admired your court vision, but this was the most dramatic example of it tonight. I always say that if you can see the pass before the coach on the bench can see it, you fooled me three times tonight. I mean, what was happening with the breakdowns? You found Benoit, you found Tommy Chambers inside. What was going on? Well, mostly it was pick and rolls, and they were running at Carl. They, and, and it seemed like they were semi-doubling me, semi-running at Carl. And 
we just been waiting at it all night. Guys, we kept saying step to the basket, step to the basket, and finally at the end, a couple things opened up, but we've been looking for it all night, just hadn't been able to get there because they recovered so well. The one thought I had, John, the Spurs stepped up tonight. They hit the three. Dallas had a good night. Rodman came in, played his usual game. So you weathered the best they had to throw at you tonight. I, I think they I think they played a heck of a game. We had they had us down there in the fourth quarter, and I thought that was crunched. I think it would have been easy for us to say, oh well, we'll get them in San Antonio, but but I thought everybody stuck to their concentration. We got back in the game and and then once we got the lead, I thought the crowd carried us a little bit. What about your next opponent? Well, uh, we don't know who it is yet, right? They're right. even at two, by the uh, way, guys. Right. Two, two. for one tonight. And uh, so they got to go back to Seattle. E either way, tremendous teams. Obviously, Seattle has the best record in the league, best team in the league. Uh, it's going to be tough to beat them up there. And if it's Denver, we'll, we'll throw, our, throw our luck out there, too. So I'm looking forward to the next round. It doesn't matter who we're playing. Great but, game, Johnny. Well, you Thanks, had Coach. Seattle here 2-1 last year. Remember, you <laughs> let them escape. Well, uh, hopefully we get another opportunity. <laughs> All right, John, congratulations. Thanks. As the Utah Jazz pick it up a 95-90 win, let's go to Atlanta. Here's Earl.